All right. And it's a go. Brief overview of the presentation. We have an hour and lots of things to present. So we'll do a little introduction. I will then present Project Biblius. What is con it consists in the implementation calendar, whether or not you have access. And then we'll have a gathered tour or a demo of Biblius so you can use it and explore yourselves. And if you, there is some time left afterwards, we'll be able to take a few questions. And I'll ask my colleague to propose questions. Otherwise, please ask your questions throughout the presentation and she will answer directly in the Q&A. Before starting out, yeah, we could have just done the Biblius guided tour, but we thought it was important to contextualize so you can really understand what an online school library is, how it's different from a physical school library, how it's complementary, and how it can be used in the classroom. So we'll present all that before the demonstration. So to introduce ourselves, we are project managers of Biblio Presto, which is a nonprofit organization launched in 2012 by a group of public libraries at the time, the goal of which was to create digital services to support libraries in their missions. We started with online libraries, but we now support all sorts of libraries, including school libraries. Many projects were launched by Biblio Presto over time, including the digital loan used in almost all public libraries in Quebec and many in New Brunswick. And of course, many other projects, including Project Biblius, which is the subject of our presentation today. A little detail to start out, we need to keep in mind that it, an ebook is a file which requires space on a hard drive, a USB key, a server to store it, and requires a tool to open it. If you have just a Word document and you don't have Word on your computer, you can't open a file. So we need to keep in mind that a ebook is a file. There are many different formats of ebook on the market. There are PDFs, you all know PDFs. There are also EPUB materials, which allow different things. And I will explain that a little later. We can also have audiobooks, which are considered digital books also. We need to keep in mind that ebooks are covered by copyright law just as much as physical books. It's just as illegal to send an ebook over email as to photocopy an entire book. It seems easy to do this with a file. So this can be counterintuitive, but they're still covered by copyright law, which has some implications for access. So licenses are required to loan ebooks. We need to sign agreements with editors to make sure they accept conditions of use. For example, if we want to project an ebook on a projector, we need to sign licenses to, for, to have a framework for loans and the condition of loans. A final detail before going into the meat of the subject. We need to keep in mind the distinction between Biblius, the platform, the management tool, and its content, the books themselves. So if there's a parallel with a physical library, Biblius is equivalent to the physical installation, the couches, the bookshelves, and the contents are the books we can put on the bookshelves. For now, it might seem a little abstract, but it'll be very clear later, and I think you will understand perfectly well. The last preliminary detail without before explaining Project Biblius in detail, currently in Quebec, there's a turn, which is a new vision of school libraries, which want to be learning hubs now, so that we could be, we could have a, presentation lasting many hours on learning hubs, but I'll just give a few preliminary details. 
It's something you might be familiar with, but it's a tendency we see among professional librarians working in school libraries to renovate libraries to respond to the needs of students and teachers, making the library a space for learning that complements the classroom, integrating new technologies such as robotics as well as ebooks. All this for there to be coherence within the reference and competence framework, making the school library a learning hub to respond to the needs of students and teachers, and also to develop digital literacy, critical thinking, informational culture, how to research. All this is connected, and it's interesting to have this in mind if you have professional librarians in your environment, you can ask them questions about this and they'll be very happy to think about all these elements with you. Now we're starting for real. As an introduction, I will present a little video introducing Biblius, an online book planning platform within the 2022 action plan, the Quebec Education Ministry is opening access to a shared digital collection for all students and teachers from the preschool to adult education level. To connect, simply go to the Biblius website. More than 400 um, young adult books accessible online everywhere on all your screens to support teaching and learning, respecting copyright, projecting on TNI within the framework of distance learning. The student can add a book to his group readings. The book will appear in the student's I must read section. Vocal synthesis tools integrated within the platform So this is a little introduction. I know that the current conference is translated into English, but the current video is only available in French. All right, so let's get started for real. We saw that Biblis is part of the Digital Action Plan for Education and University Teaching. Measure 17, it reads as follows. The ministry will deploy ebooks within Quebec school libraries and encourage the transition of libraries towards learning hubs. It's in this context that the Ministry of Education asked Biblio Presto, which had a rich experience having implemented ebooks within public libraries, to implement ebook borrowing within school libraries. That's why my colleagues and I were hired. We have rich experience as school librarians. We've worked in school service centers and the intention was to ensure that we're responding to the needs on the ground by responding to the particularities presented by the school environment. Biblius is aimed as all teachers and students from the preschool to for professional and general adult learning levels, but it's not aimed at CGEP or university students or professors. The project, we can summarize it according to four axes with two transversal axes, one technology. It's like an online space. So we need to implement technologically this element with different functionalities, ensure that we can use it pedagogically thinking about all this. There's a big technological aspect, but also a juridical and economic aspect. This can be more obscure, but it's nonetheless important to develop agreements that allow use of these resources within learning and teaching context. We can think about Copybank, which negotiates for reproduction rights, but we're talking about use rights. We're not reproducing, we're just using the books. 
So there's the whole economic juridical aspect. There's a training aspect. One of our missions with Bibio Presto is to support implementation, to support training of professional librarians, and to helping professionals support professional training and mastering of the platform. There's finally a big communication aspect, which is the reason I'm here today. It's very important within the framework of the project to have a link between, a balance between the needs of librarians and the needs of educators, but it can seem a little obscure, but it's important to understand. We're implementing something new in Quebec, and it's a new form of interaction between the education and librarian sectors. So Bibio Presto is involved, the Ministry of Education is involved, as well as many partners collaborating with us. I was drawing parallels between the physical and digital libraries earlier, and maybe we'll clarify this element by drawing connections between the two. The traditional library is accessible within the school. It's pretty straightforward. Biblius is accessible digitally. It's a digital, digital, not a tangible tool. It's accessible via the school's portal or online. A traditional library is a physical space where one can walk around, browse books before borrowing them. And of course, there are bookshelves where one can shelve different types of books. Biblius is an online platform which can resemble a website. It's not really a website, but it can be conceived as such. One can explore the virtual bookshelves, the different categories, and also browse excerpts of the books before borrowing them, which can be very book good and allow for coherence with physical libraries practices. On the traditional library side, there's an online research tool which allows us and there are also certain the presentations according to certain themes with these tools. With the online library, there are also tools which allow us to do the same thing, to organize books according to different themes, maybe according to the time of the year, but also robust search tools which allow to search by author, subject, and so on, as well as discoverability tools. That's when we don't really know what we're looking for. We can organize a search according to different clues, and this will be explained further during the demonstration. On the traditional library side, it's a physical place. Where can we read within the library, or we can borrow the book and read it elsewhere for the online library, there's a function that allows the reader to open the books on the online platform. So someone can have access to the online library from anywhere. They can open the books from everywhere. Uh, on the side of the traditional library, there's furniture, tables, chairs, computers, TNI projectors on the uh, Biblia side, there are functions that favor pedagogical use of the material being offered on the side of the traditional library. Almost every library has there a borrowing counter. On the Biblia side, there's no counter, but there's a software to manage borrowings and returns. So there's complementarity between the traditional library and Biblius. I should have mentioned earlier, but I had admitted this, the intention of Biblius is not to replace physical libraries at all. The intention is rather to broaden the library's service offer 
to respond to every student's need and staff needs as well. So there's certain contexts where ebooks have an added value if we want to project on TNI, for example. So the example is not to downgrade physical libraries, but to offer a broader service offer, allowing students to meet the needs of students and teachers. How does the Biblius platform, how can the Biblius platform and ebooks, how can they be used in class? So there are conditions of use that have been negotiated. What can we do with Biblius? First, we can read on any type of device with internet access, which means that whether we have an iPad, a smartphone, a Chromebook, this allows for access to the digital library, to this allows for opening books and reading them. Whatever the device we have in hand, it functions very well overall and it's accessible from everywhere. We can start reading at school, continue at home, on their smartphone, on the bus, on my iPad, etc. This is all possible without difficulty. It's possible to project on TNI. So according to our agreements with publishers, all the books on Biblius can be projected integrally. And this is the same thing when it comes to e-learning. So all the books were not limited to experts, excerpts. All the books can be projected. We can project the entirety of an atlas, for example, if we do this live. No recording is allowed. This must be used in a live context. But according to that condition, under that condition, it's allowed. Teachers can also read to their groups of students, which will be more explained further on. As far as concrete use is concerned, personally, as a project manager, I'm not giving pedagogical advice. I would ask you to turn to your pedagogical counselors for this kinds of questions, rather. But librarians, self-study specialists can all help you reflect about pedagogical use of these materials. But in a very general way, we can use ebooks in the same way or in the same context that we use physical books, reading circles, projecting on TNI. So I invite you to ref think about potential uses and discuss this with your colleagues. What are the materials offered on Biblius. There are no textbooks. It's rather young adult literature, documentaries, young adult novels, poetry, popular works, just as in the physical library. There are books in French and in English. Eventually, we could have books in other languages as long as they're accessible as ebooks on the market. At the beginning of the presentation, I was saying that it was important to distinguish the tool itself from its, the collection. We can classify books according to different collections. And there's a shared collection with 407 books offered by the Ministry of Education for all students in the public network, in the public school system. So all students in the public school system have access to these 407 works selected. There was a survey to identify needs. And we did this to identify a broad digital collection to all students. It's possible also to carry out local purchases. 
So your local resources, your human resources, your financial resources, you can buy more digital works and make them accessible on your own platform. I won't go into too much detail today, but it's good to know that this can complete your Biblius offer and diversify your local collection. This will be accessible only for your school, your service center, and in that case, it won't be accessible everywhere. The communication side, very important. I invite you, if you want to know more, to go on the Project Biblius website. If you want the most recent updates, I'll go show you the tools and training tab soon. If you go to projectbibius.ca, you have lots of information in French and English on the different functions. I'll do a pretty quick demonstration later, but if you want to search and learn more, don't hesitate to refer to the website. You also have the contact form if you have questions. Any kind of question concerning the project, you can communicate with us or speak to your professional librarian. Generally, they're working with the administrative center. Don't hesitate to contact them. And we can also put you into contact with people in your immediate environment. Biblius is available in French and in English. However, all the tools are available, on, all the guides are available only in French. But as there is a general overview of all this information in English. For the training aspect, I really encourage you to talk to your pedagogical counselor, to your self-study specialist, your librarians, to start brainstorming with them about how to use the platform. If we are not quite familiarized with digital tools, it can be a little intimidating, but thinking about how to use these tools is very important. Biblius is a brand new project, which hasn't been launched for a very long time. Uh, yes, it's a brand new project. So there's a lot of work left to do. We have many partners and it's part of our intentions to collaborate with colleagues which could use certain tools on the website. That's the very beginning of something which will probably expand and become even more interesting. On our website, we also have online resources, which I will show you in just a little bit. Last point before the demonstration is calendars. From 2019 to 2021, we were thinking about how to deploy, how to implement the platform, study needs on the ground, negotiate license agreements with editors. Because of the pandemic, there were some delays, but there was a restrained implementation phase from 2019 to 2021 in 17 environments in Quebec, one private school, two school boards, 14 school service centers. So the restrained development phase was to see, it was beta testing to see what needed to be improved. We also started in January, 2021, 2020, let's beginning of the last school year, a progressive implementation for all school environments, which is continuing for 2021, 2022. So the access is for all school boards and school service centers to have access. The impl implementation phase, it's pretty straightforward. There's no local installation necessary. It's three simple steps which take about 15 minutes to connect. It's like you plugging two wires into each other. You just have to connect the two portals, Mosaic and Bibius. It's very straightforward. After having had the approval of the manager, it's a ministry project and the manager's approval is necessary before connecting 
on October 26, we have had 60 school boards or school service centers connected, representing 90% of students in the Quebec school system. So you can ask yourself the question, is my school board or school service center connected? It's very easy to know. There are two ways to know, actually three, but I'll give you two to know if your school board or school service center is connected. The first is going on the projetbiblius.ca website and clicking on connect to Biblius, me connect to Biblius, and you'll see the list of school service centers or on your mosaic portail. If you don't use it, there are other points of entry that I'll show you in a moment. But if you use mosaic portail, just click on the Biblius tile. If it appears and it has been activated, you can access Biblius. So this was for the public network of the CSCSS. So for the private sector, first of all, we have the private institutions in Quebec. Last year, we have worked uh, amongst others with the FIEP, the private institution organization to try to scan the field and see what the needs were and what were the most used portals, school portals, or educational portals. And we wanted to find out what adjustments needed to be made, what, what was already there to establish a working calendar. So the assessment was done last year. Currently, we're working on the more technical aspects to adapt and adjust everything. And the goal is to be begin the connection at the beginning of 2022, and also to follow up with the other school boards. For the, the educational inst institutions of First Nations that are outside of the CS and CSS as school boards, we're talking about band councils and institutions and in in, of that nature. So we are currently elaborating the big picture and defining the needs of those communities, those schools. Do they have portals or not? And we want to assess, we wanted to assess how we were going to go about deploying all of this and also to make sure that we would adjust the connections so that we may answer and meet the needs of everyone. So the connection calendar is to come is still to come. So now it's the time to go and deep dive into the Biblius and see how it really works. First step, so we could go through the Biblius website, as I was saying earlier. So just before I show you how to connect, I'm just going to do a, a small segue here. We have a training tool for the school and educational staff. So that is a beginning or starting point. My connection is a little slow today. I apologize for that. So when that opens up, we'll be able to talk about it. Okay, I apologize. So eventually this window will pop up, but through here, you'll have access to different video segments, you'll have the general presentation of the platform, the reading assignments, how to connect to Biblius, what are the first steps. The first steps here, that is a very short version of what I'm going to show you in a few minutes. Then how to open up a book, how to open up the vocal synthesis in Biblius, and we'll continue to add on to this page as we go throughout the move throughout the year and depending on the questions that we receive. So do not hesitate to look through this and to present this to your students as well. So this is a starting point. Of course, as we said, it's a starting point, but do not hesitate to go and connect with your CCP, your orthopedagogic uh, counselors, to get more information. So here is just a starting point. Now you have the terms of use. I have explained them to you earlier, but you can click here to see what is uh, permitted to do or not with the um, offered material. So here we also have questions and answers. You can go either at the top on the link or here down on this page. So it tells you uh, the details of what is a digital book, how you can lease one of these books, and it goes all the way up to detailed information on local 
purchases, who does what, roles and responsibilities. So do not hesitate. This information is there for you in this section. So now I'm going to go back to the main page. Now we really will deep dive into the connection process. So if you're not using Mosaic portal in your um, environment, you forgot how it works, you simply need to go on the biblius.ca website, then you click on connect to Biblius. Now you end up on the list of the school or educational services that are signed up or connected to Biblius. It is being updated in time. So you could see here, this page is uh, not dynamic. We know that it's not user-friendly, especially for students, but it's a good starting point. So if I'm a student or a teacher from the Point de Lille educational system, I click on that link and now I come here to this page, which is a connection page. So whether or not I use the Mosaic portal, I can click here on connect with Mosaic and then a pop-up identification window will ask for a, a username and a PIN number. So that was the first door. And then the second way to have access to this, you can go through Mosaic portal. So if you're using Mosaic, you can connect through here. May I be a student or a staff member? I can click here and add in my password. Voilà, ici. Donc là, je vois, je... Go. So now I am on the Mosaic portal. I have the Biblius uh, tile here icon. And if you click on it, I am redirected to my user account in Biblius. I will not be using the account here to do this demonstration because it's a real account for uh, of my colleague's son. So I'm going to use another account to continue this demonstration. So now if we go a little bit back on the first page, you can use the, the icon here, connect myself with Mosaic, and maybe they'll recognize me. I'll cancel that. So basically they're asking, they're asking for my identification number or and my password. So the ident identification um, name is your email and your password is the password that you use in your Office 365. So if I was a teacher, this is a teacher account. This is the home page on my, if I, this is my first connection. So I have no books. I have not tried anything. So you could see here it's written, nothing is being read at this time. If I want, I can click on this icon, which is explore the catalog. If I want to go and explore the virtual library, or I can also go on different themes here. These are selections that have been designed by professional uh, librarians or the people that are responsible for the administration in your area. So it can vary depending on what is being done by your local um, res respondents or counselors. So, there could also be themes and sometimes there could there may not be any things themes that it will be added on later on so here is a theme a, a selection of for first nations so there is a description here of what is included in this um in this list now i have a description of the book a short overview i have the editor the author and all of this information so what i could do is either uh, i can borrow it or i can either just look at a small overview so i can look at the first few pages to see a sample and see if it does interest me after all so it is really uh, there for consultation purposes. You cannot reproduce it. There is no reproduction function here or access here. It's really for consultation and for browsing. So now that I have looked at a sample and I like it, then I can click on borrow. 
it's very easy. So once you click on borrow, the book will open automatically on your device. So as you've seen, I have not had to upload it or download it. I didn't have to go through an app. So it did uh, this seamlessly by clicking on the icon. So this is the first time that I'm borrowing this book, but here you could see that I am on chapter two of the book. So that what that means is that I had already borrowed this book. I had already already started reading the book and the browser opens the book back to the page where you left off. So you don't have to put a marker, a, bo a bookmark or anything. You, you get to you get forwarded to the last page you have read. At the top here, you have the title and you have the expiration date of your lease. So you can lease it for 41 days. So at the end of 41 days, here at the top, you could see it's December 16, 2021. That is the end of my period, consultation period. So you don't have to go and return your book. Everything is returned automatically. So if I have finished reading my book before the end of the leasing period, I can click on the icon, return the book. So at that point, the book will be returned automatically to the system. So I'm going to show you a few functions here in the reader, the web reader that we have here. So you can click on this icon. It's the offline reading option. So you can once you have gone into the platform and you have opened up your book, you can continue reading the book offline. That could be very helpful in an area where the internet connection is not so good. Or for example, if there's a student that starts reading the book at school on his computer or his iPhone and wants to continue his reading in the bus or while taking a walk, then he can easily continue his reading offline without using some Wi-Fi data. So it is not taking up any data and the book is available. So this is a very uh, fun option here. So now there is another option that enables you to modify the visual appearance of the book. So these functions are very interesting, but they're not always compatible with every book. So when it's a when it's a book, you can increase the font, you can increase the spacing of the lines, and you can increase the margins or play around with the margins so you see a little bit how it works. I really like to put it in the night mode, nighttime mode or dark mode. It's easier for my eyes. You can also play with the definition or with the mode of the reading mode. So it could be ongoing reading mode or you can have the pages turn. So you can change up the appearance of your book. So as I was saying, if the file behind this book is an album or a, a magazine with pictures, images, illustrations, it's possible that you may not modify the layout as you can do with a regular book. So it doesn't mean that the platform is having an issue. It's just the book itself that does not enable you to use those functions. That is something we are currently working on. And as we said earlier, Biblios is new. It's a new project and it launches new needs. So we have a change of practices is also coming up with our editors and our colleagues that wish to understand what are the needs in the school environment and they want to adapt their work to the needs and that takes time. So we have many, many uh, novels that are available and we're adapting them with time. So there is another function, vocal reading that is integrated in this uh, application. So for students that are using Leximar or WordQ, you can always use those functions over these digital books as you would do with a PDF or any other Word document. So I could use my WordQ over this. 
in most cases it works with most of the novels but once again if i have a magazine or an album with many images and illustrations if there are many images and the text was not configured as an illustration i'm really sorry about the ringing behind me okay so what was i saying if it is not considered as a text document it will not be recognized by this function okay so now i'm going to show you the vocal synthesis there is an integrated one if i don't wish to use word queue or i'm using it on something else i can simply indicate where i want to start my the reading and i press on the sound and as you can hear it's reading so it's very simple it's a vocal reading of course uh, it's a robot reading it's not always uh, it's not always fun to listen to but you can use this function you can also increase the speed sometimes you'd like it to read to you uh, more quickly or you can even reduce the speed Another trick that we found here is that you can mute the sound. And for example, if I have a first cycle or second cycle students and we want to work, read as a group, we can play, press play. And this way, the sentences will be highlighted one after the other for the students to know what to read when you want them to read out loud. And also it's possible to go through the table of contents of the book. Here you see we have a list of chapters. We can go straight to chapter six if we would like. And I could also go about a research. So if I'm looking for the word chief, you can have a result in the results here, you find every page where the word chief has been written. So this is a very interesting function. Unfortunately, it's not possible to add notes in your reading. That is something that was asked for. We have many projects that are coming up to improve this platform. As I was saying, it's just a starting point here. So now I'm going to close down, shut up, shut my book, and I'm going to go back to the main page. So as you can see, as you can see here, it has changed. And why has it changed? When I borrowed the book, it went into the section I am reading or currently reading. So it shows up in this section. And if I want to continue my reading, I just simply click on play here. And your book will open back up on the page you left off. So all of this is fine and dandy, but I have selected this book out of the themes. What else is available in Biblius? We have the Explorer section, so exploration section. So this is a discovery tool. If I'm not sure what I'm really looking for, I really want to go through books on the digital in the digital library. This is a good way to go about things. So I can look at the titles so many titles are suggested here i can click on see everything show all so if i want to see everything then i can look at the authors there are collections editors and also the theme selections that we see on the main page is found on this page as well. So these are different ways to browse what is available in the library. So if I click on show all, for example, I apologize, my internet is a little bit slow here, but I eventually will see the page full of all of the books that are available on Biblius. So as we speak, we don't have the access to do a, a search in terms of target public, but that will be made available in the future. So that was the exploration tab. Now, and I, I can also do another type of research. For example, I have a classroom full of boys that are interested by hockey. So I can go here in this 
box and write hockey. If I want to look into the whole library, I can write all or I can go into subcategories. I can go in titles, authors, collections, editors, and so on. Also, I could use the advanced search option so you can combine different elements of search here. So that could be interesting. Someone, uh, for example, talked about a certain title book, book title, and I can't remember what the book title was, but I know it's about hockey. I think the editor is her to bees. I'm not so sure. I can also do a search by language. So I could say hockey books published by Urtubis in French only. And we can, oh, I'm sorry, now the option for the target public is available. So we can go about our search by target public. So I could say six years and over. And then we have the type of media. For now, we only have digital media, but it could also be audio media in the future. So now I launch my search. Oops, no results. That's possible. There could be a mistake in my writing. Or I could just broaden my search. So now we see hockey, all the books that pertain to hockey. So I can consult the book. I can look at a sample as I've done earlier. I can also borrow it if I want to look through the whole book. And now here's what interesting, if I wish to use it with my student group, I could add it to a group. So here I have group B and group A, but in reality, you will see groups that are in your mosaic portal that was were configured, configured in your mosaic portal. So you'll see an RSA code. And what's interesting here is all students are linked to that group. You don't have to import any students. Everything is done automatically. And we know here which students are in what group. So now I will assign this book to my student group B. And now I can go back and readings that are in the program up here. So here I have uh, two groups. I could be an arts special specialist and I have two groups, two classrooms. So here I can go back and see which books have been assigned to which groups. If I don't want it to be here anymore, I can click on X, on the X to delete it. So now I'm going to connect myself as a student so that you can see what is the student experience. So here on the main page for students, it's a little bit different. There is the section I am reading here. So these are books that have been begun or initiated or started by the, the student. And on the right, you have the section I must read. So these are reads that have been assigned by their teachers. So if I click on here, I see group B. For example, I'm in high school, I have my history teacher, my French teacher, my art teacher that is assigning me different books to read. Here I can only click on the, the book and start reading the book. So for the rest of the interface, it's very similar. So you have the search option, selections, exploration option. So it is also possible to reserve a book when it is not available at this time. So the 407 books are offered by the ministry. So they are available at the same time by everyone. But for local purchases, if you want to complement your collection, your local collection, it's possible that the book may not be available or on back order or the use can be limited by one user at a time. So in that case, the book would be showing as not available, then you would have to reserve it. And once it's available, you would get a notice and you will be able to borrow it. Soon it'll also be possible to borrow a um, complete license to have a complete license for one particular teacher. So this is ongoing. 
So I'm going to stop my presentation here. I just wanted to give you an overview of Biblius, and you will be able to explore on your side now. OK, wait, one last point, I'm sorry. In Biblius, with the connection you've seen earlier, we went through the mosaic portal, the school portal. So the advantage of that, um, to be able to import your groups, it also enables you to limit the access of books that are for a target public of 12 years and older for the high school students. So an elementary school teacher would not see any books for students that are 12 years and older. But uh, sometimes when we are a sixth grade teacher, we have advanced groups sometimes, and we may want to use particular books that are for students over 12 years of age, but we can have access to those books. I can assign it to, you can assign it to your group. For example, uh, à la recherche du bout du monde, if this book was for students of 12 years and older, if I would have connected to the platform as an elementary school teacher, I, a student, I couldn't have seen this book. But if I am a teacher and the teacher has assigned this book, then the student that is under the 12 years of age will have access to the book. So that's about it for this small presentation. So now we will go back to the main presentation here. So I will conclude uh, now. We've gone through this information pretty quickly, but what I want you to know that this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning of a great adventure, even if it has been in demand for many for a few years now. And for many years now, they have been asking for digital books for our students for, with special needs. So what we are presenting to you here is something that we have finally come up with, but it's an ongoing process. So we are continuing to work in collaboration to improve Biblius, to improve the platform, and also to improve the novels that are integrated on this platform. So we have a first launch of novels, and we'll continue to do a deep dive on its contents and see what needs to be put into place with, uh, in collaboration with the collaborators or colleagues in the ministry and the environment. And also, we will look at its complementarity with the school library. So of course, that is a lot of information all at once, but do not hesitate to Consult with your pedagogical counselors to see how to use this tool. If you have any technical issues or questions pertaining to the platform, we invite you to, first of all, communicate with your librarians or the person responsible in your environment. And you can also write to us and we will be able to refer you to the correct person. So basically, Biblius is the first chapter of a great adventure, and we cannot wait to write the next chapters, chapters in collaboration with you. So now I think we have about five minutes left for questions. Just before we go to questions, I'm going to put up here the website for projetbiblius.ca. As I've said, do not hesitate to write us. And in the projectbiblius.ca platform, there is a section a contact section. There is a form you can fill out that will be sent out to our team. We are a team comprised of three managers, project managers. So we are able to, we try to answer all questions that come forward. If not, we try to refer you to the proper uh, appropriate contact. Okay, so now I'll stop sharing my screen. Yes, Sarah Krim. Sarah Krim, do we have any questions? Yes, we did have many questions. I have answered them as we went along. And one of them was, is WordQ Lexibar com compatible with the web readers? 
Yes, as I was saying earlier, what Lexibar and WordQ are compatible with the reader and they're also compatible with the platform itself. So if you need the description of the book, you could uh, pass over it with the Lexibar or WordQ applications. So they're compatible with the reader, the tool, the contents are compatible. But the novel itself, it could happen that in certain albums or in certain comic books that this tool may not work. So it depends on how the book was configured by the editor. Though that that's an work that requires a lot of work on the part of the editor to try to make their work, their novels as accessible as possible. So you need to keep in mind that if it's not currently accessible or usable with WordQ, then it may be accessible and available in the future. So it's a work in, prog in progress. Another question, does the school have to pay for the purchase of books? So the 407 novels that are offered by the ministry are free of charge. It is offered by the Ministry of Education. So the access to the platform, the use of the platform and the shared collection is free of charge for the whole public network. If we wish to go about local purchases to buy or purchase novels in Biblius, it is not possible to purchase a collection for each school. So the local collection must be developed and shared throughout the school institution. So what that means is if you buy a book with a local budget, it will be accessible for all students and staff and personnel in my school environment. So it's up to every school to see how they want to centralize the information or organize this information. It's really up to them. We have many questions about the upcoming functionalities. For example, uh, notes, note taking in the books. Uh, can we assign a book only to one student or a small group of students? Yes. OK, well, to be able to assign a book to one student only, that is something that was requested. It has been highlighted uh, last year in the restrictive deployment last year. It is something that is ongoing. We don't have any precise date as of yet. There is a lot of development left to be done in that sense. So I see that we only have one minute left. Do we have a small question left? So you have mentioned that there was a lot of questions uh, regarding the access for private schools. Yes, okay, so for private schools, the deployment calendar, we are currently finalizing technical connections for different portals that the most used portals. So as soon as this uh, technical aspect is completed, we will be able to share a deployment calendar with the people from the FEP, from the ministry, and we will share and make it public in order to establish a connection plan and depending on the budgets, the environment, uh, et cetera. So for now, it has not been made public yet, but it should be made public at the beginning of the winter. We don't have a date yet. It will be um, published on uh, LAFU on the website, so do not hesitate to consult the news. So. It is 12.20. Thank you very much for your interest and your participation. I will like, would like to thank my colleague Sarah Kim and the people from RECI. And we thank the people from the ministry to have uh, invited us to present this to you. So thank you and have a great day.